Askey. Mr. Speaker, today I join you from Treaty 5 territory, the territory of the Nisichawasi Cree Nation from my home in Thompson. I would like to share my time with my colleague from North Island, Powell River. Today, I rise along with my NDP colleagues to call for immediate action by Canada for justice in the memory of the 215 children found in a mass grave at the Kamloops Residential School on the Kamloops Tisquewap Territory. In memory of the countless other Indigenous children who were victims of Canada's genocide against Indigenous peoples. The news of the shocking reality of the abuse the murder of these 215 children has shaken our country to its core. People are in shock. People are mourning. People are asking how this could have happened, how such unspeakable cruelty, such horrific violence, such abuse and deliberate culpable negligence could have been part of an official state policy, a state policy of genocide. First Nations in our region have been grieving. Survivors, their children, their grandchildren have been reliving unspeakable trauma. They are sad. They are angry. A couple of days ago, I received a call from Eunice, a respected elder from Tatasquiat Cree Nation, a survivor. I asked her at the beginning how she was doing. She told me she was sad, that she was angry. But in residential school, quote, they taught us not to cry, unquote, she said. But she wanted to. And Eunice was clear. As a survivor, there must be action for current and future generations. Every single survivor I've heard from has been clear. Their children, their grandchildren have been clear. There must be action. Today, we in the NDP are standing in solidarity with First Nations, survivors, intergenerational survivors, in calling for the truth, for action, for justice. The Michikamak Cree Nation has called on the Prime Minister to fund the search of the site of the residential school imposed on them for decades. They are certain more bodies of children will be found. They want to bring them home. York Factory Cree Nation has called on the federal government to protect each of the sites for proper investigation, ceremony, and commemoration. Burial sites must be found. School records must be available. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls must be fulfilled, they've said. Every single First Nation in our region is clear. There must be action. And there must be truth. There has not been truth for Indigenous peoples in Canada. The truth starts with making it clear that Canada's treatment of Indigenous peoples is genocide. The genocide of Indigenous people that was a deliberate state policy of colonialism, of ethnic cleansing, of genocide. Let's be clear that the government of Canada had an agenda to intentionally take over the lands of Indigenous peoples to exploit them for profit. This includes a policy of deliberately starving people off the land, killing their leaders, a policy that sees told children to be taken away from their parents and their communities and placed in church-run institutions that were based on a policy that devalued their way of life, their culture, and their lives, period. The story of Canada is rooted in genocide. The discovery of a mass grave of 215 children is further confirmation of that genocide, a genocide that is ongoing. There must be truth. It starts with calling residential schools for what they were, detention centers, prisons, and all too often, torture chambers. The physical, sexual, and emotional abuse perpetrated by staff, including clergy, the abuse sanctioned by the state, abuse that was known, but too often covered up. And the deaths, 215 deaths at a school that had only 50 recorded. Hundreds, if not thousands, more children unaccounted for across this country. The victims as young as three years old many of whom died with no official records of death, their remains not even treated with dignity, buried in unmarked, even mass graves, no consideration of returning them home to their loved ones. This wasn't in a faraway country. This is Canada.
a system that was in place until the 1990s. And let's be clear, these weren't just unfortunate coincidences or incidences, the actions of a few. What occurred was part of deliberate state policy. It didn't just happen. It was a system designed this way. There must be action. But two days ago, Mr. Speaker, in Parliament, we had a chance to talk about this, about the 215 children found at Kamloops Residential School. And instead of action from this government, we heard more words. The Prime Minister stated that Canada failed Indigenous peoples. The Minister of Indigenous Services told us to speak to our kids because they know what happened. Not acceptable. This is gaslighting. As if Canada isn't the one that's responsible. As though its current government does not have a direct responsibility for this genocide. To the Prime Minister, I say, this is a genocide. A genocide against Indigenous peoples. And the irony, we, Canada, lectures the world on human rights, on peace, on justice, and we ignore the brutal history of colonialism and the vile racism and white supremacy at its root. We lecture the world while we gloss over, even deny the genocide against Indigenous peoples here at home. We talk about reconciliation, but we don't mean it. We ignore the truth. We still defend the people and the systems that upheld colonialism and genocide as state policy. And let's be clear, what happened to Indigenous children generation after generation was a policy rooted in colonialism that was administered with unspeakable cruelty and inhumanity. If you're not part of the solution, you are part of the problem. The world is watching. It is time for Canada to say the truth, to uncover the truth. It is time to state clearly that racism, colonialism, and genocide are part of our history and our current day-to-day -day reality. It is time to commit to nothing less than decolonization. It's time for actions, not words. It starts with justice, justice for the children working with Indigenous communities to uncover every single site that children were abducted to, to find these children, to bring them home. Let's treat this for what it was, crimes against children, crimes against Indigenous people that should and must include the laying of criminal charges. And let's stop using the court system to fight against Indigenous children and people. Let's ensure that this government pays its reparations for the incalculable damage, the horror that this genocide has caused. And let's also not forget the many dimensions of this colonial system, the historic legacy and current reality, that there are First Nations to this day that still do not have clean drinking water, adequate housing, live in abject poverty, have second-rate health care services, underfunded education, lack of social services, lack of recreation. And in 2021, we still have emergencies, states of emergency, because children are taking their own lives to suicide because they feel hopeless. Mr. Speaker, in the memory of these children, in the memory and in honoring all survivors, their children and grandchildren, there must be justice. As a mother of three, two three-year-olds, the age of the youngest victim in Kamloops, I cannot cannot imagine what their mothers went through, what those children went through. In their name, there must be justice. The colonialism, the genocide that has caused and continues to cause immense suffering for Indigenous peoples must stop. And we must hear them when they say that they are here, that they are not going everywhere and it is anywhere, and that the history of the colonizers and their view of the world is not what sticks. Colonialism is doomed to fail. Indigenous peoples deserve respect, deserve justice, deserve clear recognition of this being what it is, which is genocide. Mr. Speaker, every child matters. The 215 Indigenous children that died at the Kamloops Residential School mattered. The Indigenous children that died at residential schools across Canada mattered. We will not forget them. In their memory, we must and we will achieve justice, decolonization for Indigenous peoples for Canada.
Thank you. Can I ask now, Masi? Uh, 